Hello there, I'm Elizabeth, and thank you for joining me. And this is another little video on my process. I'm starting a little 8x8 on wood with acrylic paints. Um, I've already gessoed um, and scratched into the paint with the end of my brush, and that was the first little gesture marks that you saw there. And um, I, I, it's dried, and then I started in with my graphite pencil. And here I'm just starting to add the color to this, and I do work intuitively, so I have no idea. I, I pick my colors out intuitively, too. I think this is a thylo blue that I've got going on here. And I just, I just come in when I paint, and I choose which colors, and I set those jars out, and then I set those out on a palette, and there I go. I just start painting with it. And... Um, so this will be the first layer. This will be part one of two parts to this painting. And um, I just enjoy, I, I just hope that you enjoy watching me um, uh, paint my, the process of my painting. It's, um, I'm mixing myself up here, just watching myself paint. I'm wondering what am I doing? What am I? What am I doing? But um, it it all works out in the end, and it does begin to look like a mess, and it does look confusing, and um, but I just I'm just painting. I kind of go into my own little world while I paint, and um, sometimes I'm listening to music. Here I'm not. I am just painting. So when I'm like that, I'm I'm just. I'm just thinking about things, things I need to do the day, things, places I've been maybe, um, memories, just thoughts, lots of thoughts. So um, there's that thylo blue, which here's my favorite. I love thylo blue, a little bit of yellow in it, or should say yellow with a little bit of thylo blue in it. Thylo blue is such a strong color. And then I add white to it, and I get this kind of a seafoam green that I love to work with. So, um, yeah, it's just really confusing looking right now. Um, and I, I, I just really, I, I have faith as I'm working that it's going to, it's going to work into something. I just continue to add colors wherever or my mind tells me to go next. I just say, okay, I'll just, I just do that. And I continue on that way until something will begin to occur, emerge that may remind me of something, or I might think, oh, I like that, and it'll become the lead into um, the next moves in, in order to pull it together. So this um, there, I'm, I'm introducing. Um, I think it's purple dioxone purple. And, um, so, um, I guess I just decided I needed some circles in there, so there I went with it. I am painting the sides on this. That is something that I have been working on with these small paintings. It's difficult for me because I get really focused on the painting itself and on, on that surface that I forget that. I was going to paint the sides on it. So sometimes I can go back while I'm painting and do it, but I really, really try and remember to do it. And I know it's a habit. Once I get used to doing it, um, then it'll become a lot easier. But I just forget and um, just so focused on the painting itself that um, sometimes I go back, sometimes I'm just like, okay, it's too late. It's a lot easier if, when you're painting the sides, if you paint the sides as you're painting. To go back when you're all finished and try to duplicate those colors is just, for me, it would just be too time consuming. And um, I, so at that point, I just decide if I forgot to paint the sides, then it's just gonna be a solid white. It's usually when I paint my sides. Okay, so, um, here, um, I think that's a magenta, and then I've added yellow to it, got 
this orange color that you see and the surface is starting to fill up there I've got my little scratcher that I love scratching into through these different layers um, and it creates so much so much wonderful texture on the surface um, so using it down here in the bottom when I paint I try to um, use my colors in more than one area to, to I'm thinking of balance as I'm working so if I use that sort of an orange there on the top left I I was thinking well where else can I use this at in another part of the painting because that'll help um, kind of pull it together so I decided on the bottom here as you can see and um, so I'm kind of new at making these videos I've Kind of made it a goal to begin to add and, and load more on YouTube so um, I haven't learned everything that I need to to um, for example fast forwarding so you don't have to watch this um, the slow version because I know it can maybe get a little bit boring at times, especially when I'm off to the side mixing a, a color up. So I'm still, as you can see, remembering to do the sides. Um, looks like I forgot that dark blue, but I'm picking it up right there. And I'm still looking like quite the mess here. But I know that as I was painting, I was really enjoying those colors. Um, that I am mixing off the side and I'm sorry you can't see all that I'm mixing there and that's something else I need to work on so you can see now here which is kind of unusual I've gone ahead and I'm I'm, I'm going into some details with those little little kind of dotted areas which usually is not something I do until the very end but for some reason I decided to here the paint's wet so those colors are just naturally mixing together on um, on the wood. When I first started painting in my first years, which I'm going on about um, 12 years now, um, I was mixing all of my colors directly on the palette itself. I would use a palette knife and um, I would just mix. I would just put the colors on and I would just mix. A part of it was because I was working with acrylics that, that dry really fast and <clears throat> excuse me and it I wanted the colors to um, still be wet when I worked with them so I just I would just add lots of paint and I would mix my colors on the canvas itself oh I kind of like that right there and um, but it worked and unknowingly I was really creating color harmony because I was using those same colors mixing other colors on the on the canvas but um, now I, I pretty much mix them on the side but as you can see when the paint is wet there is still mixing that's going on on the in this case the wood itself so um, I'm about halfway through on this and as I am viewing this and talking, I'm wondering what else, what else could, am I doing? What else could I have done? But um, I, I love drawing or scratching into the paint, mark making into the paint and adding shapes as I'm doing there. It's kind of almost like a rectangle that was being um, formed there. So, that actually becomes a part of the, the final painting. I like to create contrast as far as like shapes. Um, I would have made that decision because I've, I've been doing, working with a lot of curved um, shapes that by making that um, rectangular type of a shape straight line, I was creating contrast there. So contrast is oftentimes thought of 
um, through value is the most obvious, dark and light. But contrast is created through using a variety of different types of lines, like curvy lines versus straight lines, um, really bright colors versus dull colors, um, small tiny shapes versus really large shapes. So as I'm painting, I'm, I'm trying to keep that in mind, even when I'm in the fun type of a stage here where I'm fun or in, really intuitive, where I'm just like adding and adding and adding, not really thinking that much, but I'm still really um, thinking about contrast, large, small, uh, as I'm painting. So that's a pretty important element to think about is contrast. A lot of times people think abstract paintings are just, oh, it just oh, it just looks like you just splash the color on there and just move it around and it just looks like fun and playtime and so easy, but there's really a lot more to it to really pull a painting together. Yes, the first, um, the first steps of it the first layers of it are are should be kept fun and there's really no need to um, you really need to to do that because it's going to take a bit to begin to find something in it but at some point you really have to start thinking of composition and i just spoke about contrast and there's many other elements too that um you're thinking of, you have to begin to think of in order to pull a painting um, together. So it's really a lot harder than people um, think of it when they view a, a painting. And when I start approaching about the middle stage of it is when I really start looking at it and starting to find its composition. And this one, I'm really beginning to look at it kind of sort of as a landscape abstract and that's because of these straight lines, um, horizontal lines that are going across on the bottom and versus um, the top, let's say two thirds of it, which are beginning to me to kind of look like maybe trees. I know that's kind of funny, trees, you really see trees in that? But there, there is kind of like some vertical lines in there. So I'm kind of beginning to see some trees and some sky. And um, so I'm, I'm thinking that as I'm working along um, its composition. So painting the sides there. If you're interested in seeing more of my work, you can um, see me on my website. It's elizabethchapmanartwork.com, and you can see pretty much see um, uh, not all the paintings I've created. You can see a lot of the paintings I've sold on there. I've not kept all of them that I've sold on there. You can see some of the newer paintings on there, but you can pretty much see a full portfolio of my work. You can see large paintings. Um, I paint. 36 by 36s, 36 by 48s, um, 40 by 40s. So oh, I've got some fairly large paintings on there. I have medium paintings on there. And then this would be in the small painting category. I also have a category with floral paintings. So now and then I get into some real abstract floral paintings and then I'll, I'll post them on there. So my website's a good place to go and see my work. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna try and work some more on posting videos here on YouTube. Now this one, I feel like I'm really getting um, closer to the, to the end, which I'm calling it part one. I actually left this painting for almost a week and went back to painting it again, starting up on top of this layer that you'll see finished here in a little bit. And so I will call that video part two, 
So I didn't want to tag them together because it would make it so long. Um, so if you have any comments or if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them for you. I'd love to see your comments, your uh, what your thoughts on the process of painting um, an abstract, whether, you know, mine or yours down in the comments. And I, look, I did remember to do the sides. I'm still working on them. So looks like I got a little bit off the camera there. And I'm working a little bit more on the sides because I know I'm, I'm getting close to finished with this. I, I know that I, um, when I was getting to this point, I knew that it wasn't going to be finished at this session. For me, it's really, most of the times, I really just have to get away and, and leave something alone. Very rarely do I finish a painting from start to finish in one session. So, with this one, it was a, a little bit, I don't put so much time between it, that, but this one I did put almost a week, and it was a little bit more difficult when I came back to it. Um, you'll see me in part two to um, continue on. But um, it did change, and you'll have to stay tuned for part two. Okay, I'm not sure what else to say. Um, I'm happy that I'm getting those sides painted, and um, I am I am loving it as I'm I'm. You know, how do you know to continue on? How do you know where to stop? Um, I, for me, it's just I just know I, I just really just know if, if if it just continues to bother me, there's something about it that's bothering me. I know I have to continue on. It's it's really hard sometimes because it could be some little something. It can be a part of a painting, and um, in addressing it, I end up just having to go through the whole painting. So it's a fine line for me to um, to know when a, when a painting is done. And honestly, I think I've left a lot of paintings where I maybe should have gone on. So um, years later, I may pick it up again and paint, either paint it all over again or just finish to do some something else to it that uh, makes me really love it much, much more. I love the little gestures that went through there. I'm using a really skinny brush there. Um, and again, that creates this contrast between those kind of regular shapes I was painting and then the kind of swirly, gesturely, quickly running through. Um, so, some more contrast. And I'm working on the bottom there. It's kind of like um, I'm working on a continuation there um, of kind of a, a line and keeping your eye moving along the bottom part of that. I don't want to take totally away from what's going on at the top, but I do want there to be some interest down there at the bottom too. So lightening up seems to be something I do towards the end um, and there you go that's kind of the the last of the contrast is the dark and light so making sure that I've got some really nice contrast with values so I want some really light and then I want some that are, that's really dark within the painting and so this it's getting lighter, but I don't think it's quite as light as I'm going to want it to be, which part, but stay tuned for part two to see that. And um, so here I'm adding some little gesturely lines. Um, and I often turn, especially little ones that are easy to turn. It just gives me a fresh perspective and gives me some more ideas to go on with. So, almost here at the end of this, 
and adding the, the values that will help me decide if, if it's finished or not. But I'm, I'm pretty much I'm pretty much knowing that I'm not finished with this. It's not all the way where I want it to be. But um, thank you for joining me and I hope you've enjoyed watching my process of painting. Um, it's a total mess. It doesn't make sense for a very long time. I'm working with creating lots of different kinds of contrast and I love color if you haven't noticed that yet. And um, I'm adding some details here. I'm thinking maybe I'm done, but really I know I'm not. So that'll just be a nice little um, see-through layer perhaps for something else that I layer on top. So this is pretty much it. Um, I'm not sure if I do anything else here. So anyway, leave me some comments. Um, any questions? Anything you'd like for me to to address? Make a video of? Just let me know down in the comments. And again, thank you for watching. And I hope you have a whoops. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. I hope you have a wonderful day. And happy painting. Cleaning my mess. I'm, I've, I've been really bad about it. I've got new studio stuff and I've been wanting to keep everything clean and it's I really need to let go of that and just be okay with making a mess. It's part of the process. Okay, so I think I think this is it this time. Yep, there we go. The last little just really line and I kind of called it done, I think, as I'm looking at this. I like it, but I didn't. This is part one. And um, stay tuned for part two. Thanks for watching again. Bye-bye.